Hey everybody, Pastor Hannah here. I am excited. Happy New Year. It is the month of January. What I do in January is I make sure that I preach the whole month as far as what the Lord gave me. And this month is the year of expectation. I need you to make sure that we meet right here every Sunday or whatever day of the week that we study what we're expecting. I'm expecting miracle signs and wonders. And he's a God that's going to do that for us. To my YouTube family, Happy New Year. Let's get together and go through this year of expectation. All right, let's get ready. Get in this Bible. Can you go to the book of Judges as we close out this series in the seat of expectation? And that means that for many of you all, this will be the year that you will see it, you will touch it, you will experience what you've been expecting. Amen. He gave me the scripture in Revelation. He says, I will set before you a open door that no one will be able to shut. Can you open your mouth and just release? This is my year of expectation. All right. So when it being your year of expectation, I need you to hear me. You have to sit in the seat of expectation and wait knowing that it's coming in your direction. The enemy would love to talk you out of your seat because the enemy wants you to focus on your issues and tell you it's not going to happen for you. But I came to tell you, he picked you in spite of yourself. Come on here. Let's talk. So in the book of Judges, if you study scripture, for those of y'all that take notes, and I pray that you get into the word. If you study the book of Judges, it's like a cycle. I call it the five S's. They end up in sin. When they end up in sin, God turned them over to slavery. Their enemies take advantage of them. When they turned over to slavery, then it pushed their prayer life. And they offered up the third S, which is supplication. Whenever they begin to pray, God, listen to this, would raise up a deliverer. He would handpick somebody that's going to get the children of Israel out of the hell that they got themselves into. And for many of you all, you are the deliverer of your family. You're the deliverer of your friends. He picked you in spite of yourself. The fourth S is called salvation. Listen to this. And then they get to the fifth S, which is silence. What does that mean? It is a season in your life that you have no warfare. Nobody's pressuring you. Is there anybody that's excited about your season called silence? That means that God not going to let nobody get on your nerve. God not going to let anything run your blood pressure up. You ready? What trips me out is who he chooses. Because I would think that if God going to pick somebody, he would pick somebody who had it all together. What is it about God that he picked jacked up people? Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I want to show you one of the judges, when you looked at him, his life looked a mess. But in spite of his mess, God uses his mess to deliver a message. I can't stand people that try to sit here and look like you perfect. I need you to make sure you sit next to honest people. Come on, you ain't got to tell them your business, but can you just look at somebody and say, I have issues. I got issues. You ain't got to go into detail. When I sat down with you and I saw what you wore in church, I knew your end was crazy. Look! I have issues. I want to show you something. And he picks you in spite of your issues. He literally picks you. And you don't have a choice in the matter. You didn't sign up for it. You were drafted in. Can I show you that before Samson was even conceived, God spoke to his mother and let her know, you're not going to birth normal. Anybody can have a baby, but you're about to birth a deliverer. 
And I came to tell somebody, you never fit in because you're not the norm. Even your family struggle with you because you, you might have been born in the house, but you stand out in the house. Can I show you how before he was even conceived, God spoke his purpose. If you look at the screen, if you get your Bibles, go to Judges 13 and 5. You will become pregnant. This is before she's even pregnant. You will become pregnant. You're going to have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor. His fro is going to be off the chain. You got to hear this. Because the boy will, is to be a Nazarite. And watch me, watch me, look at me. In other words, when he's born, he's born with purpose and limitations. If you study the scripture, the Bible says so that there are three things that if you were a Nazarite, you couldn't do. Number one, you couldn't cut your hair. Number two, you could never drink any strong liquor. You can't go take no shots to the head. You can't go to happy hour. Oh, y'all ain't got to say that to me. And you can't touch nothing that's dead. That's for some of you all. You can't be around dead people. Because they drain you of the strength you have. You have to be around movers and shakers. You can't even stand having conversation with people that don't talk about the future. They so busy talking about the past. You can't sit next to somebody in church who did because it, it, just, it just put your fire out. I got to be around people who came to give God glory. <laughs> dedicated to God, dedicated to God, dedicated to God from the womb. He doesn't have a choice in the matter. He now now this is this is the reason I'm sending him to earth. This is his purpose. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. He will take, he's a leader. He comes to destroy some stuff. And when I look around this room, I'm looking at some people that God sent to earth not to adjust to the temperature, but you set the temperature. That's why people can't stand you, because you refuse to adjust. You set temperatures. You change atmospheres. You make people see things in another way. You bring light in the midst of darkness. I need to use you today because some of y'all didn't mess around and let these people make you think you crazy. You're not crazy. You're a game changer. Please. Please, I'm begging you. I need you to test three people and say, hey, 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 you were picked for this. You're marked for this. You were chosen to start a business. You were chosen to, to do what you do. You were chosen to go into the field that you're in. You were handpicked to deal with crazy situations. You were handpicked to deal with off people. So let's back that thing up in the New Testament. Let's back it up in the New Testament. Because some of y'all don't believe fat meat is greasy. So I got to give you proof that you were handpicked. This explains your life, don't it? This explains your life. If you go to Ephesians, you ready? 1 and 11. Watch this. In him, we were also chosen. Look at me. You didn't pick him. He picked you. You didn't choose him. He chose you. He said, I found you polluted in your blood. You were chosen. Come on, let's read. In him we were also chosen. Here it is. Having been predestined. 
That means that you will mark, watch this, watch this, according to the plan of him. In other words, he picked you according to the plan that he has over your life. You just think you chose this occupation? No, boo. He put the passion in you. You think you just ended up doing this? No. He put that gift in you. You didn't study for this. You didn't ask for this. That. Okay. Let's, 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 I'm sorry. I get too excited. Having been predestined according to the plan of him, watch me, who works out everything. In other words, all things are going to work together for your good to produce his plan. The good, the bad, and the ugly. That's why you're not mad about anything because you can see where he going to get glory. According to the plan of him who works out, who works out, who works out, who works out, who's going to work out, who's going to work out your good, who's going to work out your failures, who's going to work out your weakness, who's going to work out your shortcoming, who's going to work out everything in conformity, in conformity, in conformity with the purpose, with the purpose, with the purpose of his will. If you could change it, you would have been changed. If you could change the way you look, if you could have changed the way you were shaped, if you could have changed what you grew up in, you would have changed. He said, but no, no, no. I'm going to put you in this dysfunctional family. I'm going to put you around things that look like it should have swallowed you up. I'm going to take you down some streets that the average person never would have made it down the street, but you survived every trap. You survived everything. And what's me? What's me? Anybody else would have been in a mental institution, but look at you. You still sitting here. Hey, hey, hey. And the revelation is this you don't look like what you've been through I need you to make sure you sit next to a survivor you ain't got to go into your bed can you please look at somebody say hey 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 I'm a survivor I told you don't judge my praise because every time I think about it should have killed me but God put hold on Hold on, let's go. You ready? Have a seat. Have we finna walk this Bible today? I'm about to show you you. Come on, have a seat. 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 Have a who works out everything. Who works out everything. Who take the bitter and the sweet, mix it together to produce you to do what you do. Who works out everything. I'm so glad they quit you. I'm so glad they fired you because he's about to work out. I want to break it down so bad. I didn't like. So let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. So when you read the book of Judges, some of them only have pieces of a chapter, half chapters. Some of them even only have one chapter. But because you have issues, we're going to give you several chapters. Because we need to see how everything is really going to work out. You're more than a verse. Your story is not like everybody else. And this is why you can't compare yourself to other people. Because they don't have the call that you have, neither the purpose that you have. Oh, here we go. So if you study the scripture, he literally takes up chapters 13 through 16. You ready? 16 is where it gets a little difficult. In 13, he's announced before he even arrives. 
We need to let the atmosphere know that change is on the way. <laughs> and I came to let some of y'all know um, God has already announced to your next that you're on your way. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Favor is about to come in this building. Hear ye, hear ye. Anointed is about to come into this city. Hear ye, hear ye. A curse breaker is on the way. <laughs> in 14 to prove that you could sit in the seat he has to give you certain victories so in chapter 14 he, he you know he gets into a bet he hands a riddle and then the enemy gets the answer from his riddle from his wife so now he got to pay a debt Hear me clearly. He slayed, he slayed some Philistines because that was his purpose. You were born to cause havoc on the Philistines. So I'm going to make your enemy pay your debt. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. He slayed some Philistines in order to pay debt, which is the way I'm going to give you a victory in the debt department. And for somebody, they never would have been able to pay the debt. But because you got purpose, you're going to get out of some tight situations that the average person would have never made it out. I need you to have this victory in your life. You're going to file for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, but oh, I only had you to go down the street so that you could know what your next is going to look like. Is there anybody besides me? Have you ever looked at your check stub and then looked at your bills and it don't add up? But didn't nobody do it? I, I need some of y'all to remember before you got money. I need some of y'all to remember before you live where you live and before you got the job that you have. Wait, hey, hey, hey. He has proven that he is your Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Is it? Look at your name and say, oh, and another victory, 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 and another victory. You got to go back and listen to my devotion from last night, because when you get into the, to the next chapter, in the 15th chapter, they make him mad. And when they make him mad, he starts setting off some stuff. And I came to tell some of y'all, your anger feeds into your purpose. Say that again. Your anger is a holy anger. In other words, God got a way of using your anger to feed your purpose. Okay, let's talk. You know, they had, they had, they had taken his wife and had given her to one of his groomsmen. Ain't this a mess? He said, all oh, to the no, no, no. He burned up their grains. He then set their vineyards on fire. And then he even burned up their olive groves. He set it off. And some of y'all, you are the set it off person. You turn places upside down. That's why you always say, all right, don't make me mad. Now I'm warning you. Don't get on my last nerve because I'm telling you, you don't want to see this side of me. Is there anybody that can admit I've been picked, but I got anger? Is there anybody? Okay, all right. So, wait, wait, so, wait, so he set it off. He set it on fire. Now they're going to try to come and get him. Now they're going to try to come and get him. And so then he run to the Israelites, and then they come to arrest him. Check this out. He told the Israelites, the only thing I need you to promise me, put me in these ropes, but don't kill me. Turn me over. Turn me over. Turn me over. He ain't get that there. They turned him over. He walking out there like this, like verse 48. And this is when the enemy think he got you. This is when the enemy is throwing a party. Before you throw the party, I'm warning you, I got proof that favor is on my life. He walk out there and he break loose what they put on him. He looked down, watch me, and he sees the jawbone of a donkey. Mm. He grabs it, and he starts slinging it. Look at me. And when he opened his eyes, he had slain, pay attention please, a thousand Philistines. What am I trying to say to you? Some of y'all need to open your eyes. 
you have killed some stuff that was supposed to kill you. You have slain depression. You have slain loneliness. You have slain abuse. You have killed some things that was designed to kill you. And the only way you killed it is that God gave you supernatural power. The enemy wanted you dead. The devil desired to sift you as we. I only want to talk to those right now who got victory after victory after victory after victory. I shouldn't even be here but by the grace of God as a matter of fact it looked like I should have lost it I can't believe I made it either those of you that got victory after, wait 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 hold on Danny your praise is supposed to match your victories if you sit there that means that you don't have that many victories but if you know that he's protected you from danger seen and unseen if you know that I've never seen the righteous forsaken if you know that no weapon formed against you has been a you slain loneliness you slain abandonment you slain the enemy on the count of three let your praise match your victories one two three go yeah you made it. Victory after victory after victory after victory after victory. When I was young, I killed something. When I got in my 20s, I slayed something. When I got in my 30s, I slayed something. You in your 40s, you about to kill it. You didn't made it to your 50s, you about to kill it. You in your 60s, you about to kill it. On your way to your seat, tell your neighbor, done so much for me, I can't even tell it all. Tell your neighbor, have a seat. You deserve it, have a seat. You deserve it, have a seat. You better sit in your seat. You better thank God. Because so much was out to stop you from getting to your seat. You got a reason to sit up. You got a reason to cross your legs. Because don't nobody know what you went through to get the seat that you... <laughs> we out here now. We out here now. Come on, tell your neighbor, have a seat. Sit in your seat. Sit in your seat. Your victories are proof that you belong in the seat. Your victories are proof. Hold on, Danny. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Your victories are proof that you belong in the seat. Your victories are proof. I want you to get this line. You ready? Have a seat. Have a seat. You're going to get it today. You're going to get it today. I know you heard that you were going to be a judge, but you can't sit in the seat until you have um, gone through some things and you've built, you've slayed some stuff. See, some of y'all want the seat, but you haven't killed anything. <laughs> we need a victory before we give you the seat. In Judges 15 and 20, it says, now, after he slayed the thousand, after he slayed the thousand, Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. So you get to sit in this seat for 20 years. How did you get this seat? Oh. I know to you it looked like I just popped up. That's because you just met me. But allow me to introduce myself. I've been through the storm and the rain. <laughs> oh my God. Giving honor to God who's the head of my life. I want to thank God for being saved, sanctified, and filled with the promise, gift of the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire. But I didn't end up here by chance or by accident.
He picked me, but I had to go through some things to get where I am. I've been down before. I've been sick before. I've been broke before. You have no idea what I went through. That's why you can't judge my praise. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Oh, my God. That's why some of y'all look tired. Didn't nobody give you nothing. Didn't nobody give you nothing. You had to fight to get this. Look at me. And then people want your seat. Before you ask for my seat, are you willing to go through the hell that I went through to get what I got? Are you willing to be misunderstood? Are you willing to be talked about? Are you willing to be close to death but God didn't let the death? Come on here. Are you willing to be rejected? Are you willing to have be lonely? Are you willing to be broken? Are you willing to be ostracized? You can't, you can't even handle nobody talking about you. You can't sit in this seat and address lies. Come on, own your seat. Own it. Own it. Come on, let's talk. Own it. Own it. Own it. And I wish somebody would tell me, you, sh you don't deserve. <laughs> All right, now. I told you, my anger got me here. I, I done caught a couple of cases. You, listen. And you don't have to keep explaining your seat either. I need you to tell your neighbor, Google me. <laughs> Look me up, boo. You don't know who you sit next to. I got a record. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The devil thought they had me, but I got a way. I got victory after victory after victory after victory. Come on, let's talk. <laughs> Can you do me a favor? Can you encourage your neighbor and tell him you deserve it? Out of all the hell you've been through? Come on, I need you to encourage them. Come on, y'all. Please do what I tell you to do. Come on here. I know some of y'all looking at them like, they don't look like they've been through that. You don't know their story. I came to tell somebody, you didn't choose this seat. This seat chose you. And he knew that he could trust you because he knew that you could withstand all the trials and the tribulations and the hell. I almost... Almost gave up. And then people are like, you don't deserve all that. <laughs> I can't stand you. I make no excuses. Because I need some of y'all to stop making excuses while you're in the seat. I make no excuses for what I have. For what I have. The Lord provided. Some of y'all need to write that down. I make no excuses for what I have. <laughs> I can't believe I got it either. Every time I sit in the seat, I'll be like, ooh, we. <laughs> and the thing is, he makes you sit in the seat knowing you have issues. Look at me. 
you can have public victories with private struggles. I want to see if y'all going to be honest over here. You can sit in the seat and have all these public victories, but then you have private defeats. So every time you get up, oh! but then when you get by yourself, you be like, man, I can't believe that I'm struggling with this thing that I'm struggling with. I can't believe, God, if you only got this one thing off of me, I would be good. Why would you put me in this seat and let me have this weakness? Why would you put me in this seat and let me have? See, this is when I don't deal with religious people. Because some of y'all want to sit there like, no, I'm perfect. I need to be around people who can admit, if, although I'm in the seat, I have to sit there regardless of my shortcoming. Regardless. Come on, lean in. Come on, lean in. Lean in. Lean in. Lean in. You got to sit here regardless. You got to sit here regardless. Because too many people are dependent upon you. Don't forget, you were sent here for the children of Israel. So their deliverance is based upon you standing in your seat. So you can't let your private struggle stop you from getting your, pub, your public victories. God, if you only knew who was struggling sitting next to you. Because the enemy been telling you, you, you don't deserve it. You, you're right, I don't deserve it. But favor's not fair. I didn't even ask for the seat. He handpicked me. I didn't want this. I didn't want this. He... So let's talk. Because some of y'all, because you only see me public, but you don't know what's going on internally. So what was going on? You got to stay there. You cannot give up your seat. You, you have to sit there regardless of what's going on in your personal life. So number one, you got to say that regardless if your heart has been broken. Regardless, like, we know in, in one chapter, he ended up, you know, his wife ended up being killed. He's now single. He never got married again. But he was sexual. He still had a burning desire in his flesh. See, see this is when the church get real quiet. Because some of y'all want people to think that you're so saved that you don't want nobody. I smell smoke in here right now. You on fire. Fire! You horny now. Look. I said it. I don't care if you old. You still got a little fire. Oh. Who by shot? If you study it, he, you know, he, um, at his wife, you find out that he just go by, do a little drive-bys. He do a couple of hit and run, hit and run, hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. He got a large body count, hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. Dip out, dip out, dip out, dip. But then one day he went to dip but didn't come out. Oh! That Don Delilah. Now I need your attention. Because <laughs> he mess around and fall in love with the wrong woman. See, you, you used to doing drive-bys. But all oh, that Don Delilah. You walk in the house, it smell like peaches and creams. I like peaches and cream. You ain't got to tell Delilah what to do. She's anointed to do what she do. Oh, you sitting next to some anointed people now. Don't you let them. I know they look saved, but that's... A, okay, stop, John, stop. Holy Ghost told me to shut up. I'll shut up. Here's the line I want everybody to get. She crushed his heart. 
Because the Bible says in Judges 16 and 4, sometime later, pay attention, he fell in love with a woman, not from the mountaintop. Doggone it, this thing was in the valley. <laughs> Anybody like leaving the mountain and tiptoeing to the valley? Tiptoeing. You sneak to the valley, don't you? Get you a tune up and bag right. fell in love with what never loved him. And some of y'all, you fell in love with what never loved you because it was never a sign to love you. It was only a sign to get you out of your seat. It was a sign to, to belittle you. It was a sign to deplete you. It was a sign to make you feel worse than what you already feel. It was a sign to crush your heart because you said, I'll never love again. And you dropped your guards in front of the wrong one. Why? Some of y'all want to get out of the seat because your heart broke. You want to walk away from your purpose because you didn't let somebody crush your heart. You ain't the only one in here who's been hurt before. You ain't the only one in here that thought that you were going to do a drive-by but laid down too long. You ain't the only one that loved something that didn't love you. You ain't the only one that fell in love, although you told yourself you weren't going to love them. And you messed around and dropped your guards. And some of y'all are sitting next to people, you just don't know what they've been through. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. This is... The young and the restless. Anybody in here, while you in the seat, has your heart ever been crushed before? Don't play with me. I only want to talk to honest people. Have you ever fell in love with somebody that didn't love you? Have you ever gave your all to somebody that only gave you a teaspoon? Have you ever gave somebody your all? Have you ever gave them like everything and you thought this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. And then you find out this ain't it. You cannot get out the seat because your heart broke. Sit your behind back down. Don't give up your ministry because you fell in love with a fool. I mean a freak. I mean a fool. I mean... Sit in your seat with your broken heart. So regardless of your heart being broken, you got to sit in the seat. Wait a minute. And regardless of disappointment, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Yeah, they did it. You disappointed? Watch this. I need you to watch this point. Ready? So here she is. He, oh, well, here we go. You should never spend the night. Hit, run, hit, run, hit, run. It's a pattern. Hit, run, hit, run, hit, run. You broke the pattern. Now you in here laying down like this y'all crib. Oh, you shacking now, huh? You ain't never spent the night. Now you got, you got your own dresser drawer with your drawers in it. If you don't get your drawers and take your behind back home and get in your seat. Let's go Bible. 16, 19. After. <laughs> After. Putting him to sleep. What she do? Working on that. I mean, um. After. Putting him to sleep. After telling him, where your secret lie? Tell me your business. You can trust me. 
just tell me the truth. I ain't going to hold it against you. <laughs> just tell me it's going to be between me and you. Come on now. And the Bible said, and she asked him three times, and each time he lied to her. Here's the line I want you to get. Everybody, I need your attention, especially you single people. The Bible says, she pressed him daily until his soul was vexed unto death. Anybody that keep calling you all day, texting you all day, won't let you catch your breath, always coming over, because they scared that if you ever get your mind right, you're going to know that this ain't right. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. And watch me. And she pressed him daily. The point is to squeeze you until they get what they want for you. And then she finally, he finally told her all his business. And he thought that he could trust her. He literally told her his truth. And she uses his truth to handicap him. You got to be careful with people that once you tell them the truth, they use your truth against you. We are here now. Bring that scripture back up. After putting him to sleep, she lay on some... On her, on her lap, she called for someone. She called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair. So he, so, and so became subdued to him. And his strength left him. And he is disappointed because you told me I could trust you. And some of y'all, you have allowed some people to disappoint point you. You cannot leave your seat because they let you down. Can I tell you something? You had the seat before you met them. You, come over here. You had a victory before you met them. And the same God that gave you victory then is going to give you victory now. But you cannot Give up your seat. Lift your hands if you've been disappointed by everybody. Look at me. Because the disappointment was to shut you down. But if you're still surviving, in spite of all the disappointment that you've been through, is it your family that disappointed you? Is it somebody in church that disappointed you? Is it your loved one that disappointed you? Who did? If you're still breathing, lift your hands for five seconds and open your mouth and worship God. Five, four, Three, two, one. <laughs> Stay in the seat. Sit your behind. Back down with your disappointed self. Keep coming to church. Keep leading. Keep getting up being a husband. Keep being a wife. But they making a fool out of me. Shut your face. Shut your face right now. You have purpose and assignment. Can I, this is a scripture that blessed me. I want you to hear me. I've never been hurt as much until I sat in this seat called pastoring. This seat has caused me more sleepless nights than anything that I've ever been through in my life. And I've learned how to continue to operate in the midst of disappointment. And watch me. Well, who could disappoint you? It's going to be always those that you allowed to get close. Come on here. Somebody from a distance can't let you down because you don't know them like that. But there's somebody that you allowed to walk close to you, that you had high expectations. Can I please show you what David said in Psalm? 55, 12, and 13. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe was rising up against me, I could hide. But doggone it is you. Somebody like myself, my companion, my close friend, somebody that know that if you do this, it's going to hurt me. And the enemy is allowed, you've opened the door and allowed the enemy. But what's me? I still, I still, I still, I still have to sit here with my heart broken and in my disappointment and still do what I do. And keep smiling. And keep loving and keep doing what you do. Dang. And I'm looking at some of y'all. This is the month that he's telling you to get back in your seat. Because your year is about to open for you. I know your heart was broken. 
I know you're disappointed, and I know that you feel, look at me, spiritually depleted. <laughs> you don't even feel spiritual no more. Can I show you what he did? The Bible says when it comes to spiritual depletion, when you, when you lack spiritual, he, she, and she, then she called Samson, the Philistines be upon you. Here's a line. He woke from his sleep and thought, listen to this, I'll just get up and just go do what I normally do. I'll go out as before and shake myself free. Here's a line. He did not know that the Lord had departed from him. So God has a way. Watch me. Watch me. God, watch me. God has a way of backing up off your seat. Not to abandon you, but to squeeze you to get back in your place. <laughs> Nobody can do what you do. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. He went out. He said, I'll just go shake myself. And I'm looking at some of y'all. You're shaking, but you're not seeing results. You're shaking, and you're not getting results as fast as you used to get them. You're shaking. You do, I mean, I'm doing what I normally do. I did everything. I'm doing the same thing. Why is it not working now? Is it possible that you have not sought him for the new rhythm? Is it possible that you have not sought, for, sought him for the new system? How many of y'all remember when we all had Blackberry phones? Those Blackberry, anybody had a Blackberry? Remember, bless me, and when Blackberry thought that they was it, they said, no, we ain't got to change, we ain't got to change. But it was somebody called Apple coming up. And so we ain't got to worry about that little phone. We ain't got to worry about that. Just keep doing what we're doing. They refuse to shift some things. And because they refuse to shift, they miss the new. Some of y'all, he's not abandoning you. He's just trying to get you to shift in your seat. Y'all not saying it to me? See, some of y'all want to stay where you at. And he's saying, I need to take, the, I need to take, mm -mm. I'm moving you. Watch me. And I'm not going to let you roll over either. It's going to be a struggle to get over here. To get you where I want you to get. Because I, I need you to see me in a new way. Those of you that believe that God's not done with you. Can I hear your worship? Watch me, watch me, watch me. Wait, wait, wait. I know your heart is broken. I know you're disappointed. And I know you feel spiritually depleted. Can I hear your worship for five seconds? For five seconds. For five seconds. For five seconds. For five seconds. Hold the music, Danny. Everybody whose heart has been broken, everybody who's been um, disappointed in this life, and everybody who feels like you're just, you're not where you used to be spiritually. If I'm talking to you, stand to your feet, lift your hands and worship God, and just tell them, I still trust you. And that I must see. Look at me. Because you're so powerful, the enemy just can't shoot you with one thing. He has to keep releasing hit after hit after hit to shut you down. Because you are not the normal. You always slip through. Those of you that know you're not the normal. I thought you would have stopped smiling by now. I thought that you would have at least taken your own life by now. I thought that you would have left church by now. Why do you keep believing? So he attacks you physically. Then he attacks you in your location. Then the Philistine seized him, gouged out his eyes. I need to stop you from seeing. Because everything you see, you get. And then I need to take you to a place called depression. I'm not going to, I'm going to take you down to Gaza. Mm. 
Mm. And when I get you down, I'm going to make sure that you never get out. I'm going to bind you with bronze shekels. And then I'm going to give you a little excitement. Watch me. What used to be easy is about to be difficult. So you're going to start grinding. It used to be easy to come to church, but you got to grind to get here. It used to be easy to pray, but now you got to grind to get here. It used to be easy to take care of your kids. You got to make yourself take care of your kids. It used to be easy to be married to you. I got to make myself stay in this house with you. It used to be easy to get around your friends. You got to make yourself go out with them. It used to be easy to do your gift. It seems like there's a ceiling and nothing is working for you and all it is the enemy thought was to get you out of the seat can you can you look at somebody and say he's shifting me (laughs) he's about to get me out of the reach of the enemy see the enemies used to hit me over here but he's about to put me in another place so I can get my mind back. I might not have eyesight. I might not can see you with my physical eyes, but in my spiritual eyes, I have a vision that God has not done with me. If you can relate to anything that I've said, I need to hear you worship God in the midst of your shift. Go. This is what he was doing to you for the last two years. He was relocating you. This is why nothing seemed to move for you for the last two years. Because he was getting you out of the space that you used to be in. But he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, you about to abide. He's about to get you out of the reach of the enemy so you can begin to think again. Those of you that are glad that he didn't kill you where you were, can you please, 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 I need your attention. I need your attention. I need your attention. Ratanamasi, Sheke, Torandanamasi, Shatorobosiki, and the Lama, Mama, 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 Mandana Basaya, Sheke. Please, I need you to encourage somebody. Don't give up on God. Because He won't give up on you. Come on, tell me the rest of it. He's able. I'm begging you. 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 Get back in your seat. 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 Wait, 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 wait. So, so, so. When your heart is broken, when you're disappointed, when you lack spirituality, and when you're not right physically, and you're not, and you feel like you're in the wrong location, God has a way of secretly letting your hair grow again. Look at me, look at me. It's not as long as it used to be, but I see growth. Is there anybody that you grew from the heartbreak? Is there anybody that you grew from the disappointment? Is there any, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. You might not be as strong as you used to be, but I've learned some lessons that I never would have learned had I not been through what I've been through. Look at the screen in Judges 16, 22. But the hair on his head. Head began to grow again after the attack. <laughs> You've been Marvin Sapped. I'm stronger, wiser.
<laughs> Tell your neighbor, I've been set. Woo! I can't believe I've made it this far. The enemy did everything he could to take me out, but I made it. Y'all not praising God the way I want you to praise him. You might not have a praise you used to have, but I need you to give him a little praise that you're not where you used to be. You might not have the growth that you used to have, but is there anybody that see improvement? Stop looking at other people's hair and feel your own head and know you're feeling a little growth coming. I gotta move fast. Hey! Everybody that know you still here. I can't believe I'm still sitting in the seat that I'm sitting in. Because I almost gave up. But I'm telling you right now, the devil did his best to try to make me think that, he, that God was done with me. But although I thought he was done with me, he still keep giving me signs that there's more to be expected. I need you to open your mouth and say, this is my year of expectation. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I've seen the invisible. All I need you to do is have hope. Hold on, hold on, Daddy. There's a certain, like, like, I feel like there's a certain praise that we owe him. Hold on, y'all, hold on. And I feel like when, when we release this praise, heaven's going to open. And you about to get new strategies. Like it's about to be another chapter in your life. Like you about to do more towards the end than you did in the beginning. I feel like you owe him a praise. I'm sorry. I feel like I, I, look at me. I would have got you out the seat a long time ago, but I ain't God. And he knew you had issues before he even picked you. I need you to go ahead and give God a praise that he still got time to do what he gonna do in your life. Release a praise right here. One, two, three, go. Out of all the things that I've been through. Yeah. Out of all the things that I've been through. Shia. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that I am not dead. Great is everybody that's glad he gave you another chance. Release the praise right here. Go, go. Go. <laughs> he just took the locks off what used to be difficult is about to be made easy you ready I gotta give you this and I'm done so people thought that you should have gave up the seat, but while you're at the seat, you got to pray. 
I'm going to give you three things. You got to pray, you got to reach, and then you got to push. You got to pray, you got to reach, and then you got to push. So now they got them blind, they got them grinding, they said, bring them out. They should have never brought them out. Because every time you bring me out, you give me another chance. They say, bring them out so that we can make sport of them. People think, they, people think that they're making fun of you when they really set you up for your next. I need to say that again. Do you hear me? They say, bring him out so we can make sport of him. And some of these people think that they invited you to, for, them to, for you to look like you stupid. But they just gave God another chance to perform another miracle in your life. Yeah. And when they get him out there, look what he says. He prayed. He says, then I'm going to pray to the Lord. Sovereign Lord, remember me? <laughs> Since you remember me, strengthen me. And if you strengthen me, let me have another victory. Remember me? Hello? Strengthen me? Hey, let me. After he prayed, after he prayed, you ready? Go to the next one. Then he what? He reached. You ready? Hear me. You cannot get your next victory just sitting in the seat. You're going to have to reach for the tools that's going to give you the victory. Then Samson reached towards the two center pillars on, on each side of the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left hand on the other. And after he prayed, he reached, and after he reached, he pushed. I need you to hear me. Your victory is not just going to come because you sit in the seat. I need this to be your year to push. Yeah, yeah, I can only be honest with you all. There are times that I feel depleted. There are times that I feel like I don't have the strength, I don't have the energy. You, this is, okay, we out here now. There are times I don't want to be bothered. But before I got here, he told me, your life don't belong to you. He told me you cannot have a bad day. When you having a bad day, you can't come outside. Because the moment you open that door, you belong to the people. And you got to slay everything that come in your sight. So you're going to have to push. Tell your neighbor God's about to give you a push. Uh-uh. Listen to this. That's going to last for the whole year. Hey! God, can you please make this church spiritual? Can you not let me talk this spiritual stuff in these sitting in carnal seats? Touch your neighbor and say, push. Push to go to work. Push to stay married. Push to raise your kids. Push to do ministry. Push to get out of depression. Push to get out of a bad, crazy relationship. Push to be saved. Push to be better. Push to not be like your crazy family. Push to keep your space. I want to show you what your push is going to do. Bring it up on the screen. Samson said, let me die with these Philistines. What does that mean? Let my ending be great. Then he pushed with all his might. Stop right there. Before you quit, I need you to ask yourself, did I give it my all? Look at me. Before you walk out the door, you owe yourself a question. Before you get up out of the seat that you didn't even pay to get in. Did you give it your all? Because the Bible says he pushed with all his might. And down came the temple of the ruler, on, on the rulers and all the people in it. Here's the line. And he killed more, many more when he died 
than where he lived. Your ending is going to be greater. Oh, I want to hit some of y'all so bad. If you only know how I'm standing up here, I want to walk on this, off this stage. Your ladder is about to be greater. You think you lost a house. Your next house can, won't even be compared to what God is about to give you. You think you lost a job, baby, bye. Everybody stand up now. Everybody. Hood talk. Stay in your seat. Joseph had to stay in the seat when he was being thrown into the pit. Daniel had to stay in the seat even when he was thrown into a lion's den. Peter had to stay in the seat after he lied, he cussed, and denied. Jesus had to stay in the seat after they lied on him, they tried him, they spit on him, they beat him, they hung him on the cross, and he's still up there telling my father, forgive them when they know not what they... Baby, die! Quitting is not an option. You were born to do this. And I'm looking at some of y'all, you done got up out the seat. The Lord told me to tell you, all things are now ready. And your seat is still vacant. If you make up your mind that you're gonna, if you're gonna push this year and give it everything you... Can you bring up the scripture in Deuteronomy 33? Here's your word, here's your prophetic word. I want to be a prophet just for this one minute. Some of y'all don't listen to this. It's a prophetic word. God, your God, will restore everything you lost. He'll have compassion. He'll have compassion. He'll have compassion. He'll have compassion on you and your issues. You did not. Your promise is bigger than your mistake. He'll come, he'll come back and pick up the pieces from all the places where you were scattered. Hold the music. Hear ye, hear ye, you spiritual people. This is your year of expectation. If you sit in the seat that he gave you, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Let me go over here. What God is about to do for you. He knew you didn't have it together when he picked you. He knew you had issues before he chose you. That's why he picked you anyway. But everything is going to work together for the good. All you owe him is a push in your... Hold on. Hold on. Do me a favor. And this is what I want your prayer to be. Take me back to the prayer. To the prayer. And he prayed. And he prayed. And he prayed. Take me back to your, oh, you got to pray. Take me back to that scripture. Come on, y'all. Judges 16, 28. All right. And Samson prayed to the Lord. Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me at this 930 service. Just once more. And let me with one praise. And let me with one praise. Get revenge for what the enemy did for you. God, can you strengthen me at this 930 service? And can you let me with one praise? Just can one praise make up for the years that I lost? Can one praise get me ready for my next 10 years? Can one praise set everything in order? But God, I need you to give me the strength to give you the craziest praise that I have. God, get me ready to release a shout like I've never shouted before. Get me ready to dance like I never... Get me ready to walk. Get me ready to run. But whatever you do, don't let me stand still. Give me the strength I need to give you with one blow with one praise with one shout on the count of three i pray he give you the strength to do what you do it's on you one two three go
Juan Blow. One shout. One holla. One run. One walk. Everybody that almost gave up your seat. I need you to start walking and believing that he's about to get you in your rightful place. Come on, we're almost done. If you're in the balcony, I need you to move your feet. You got to pray. You got to reach. You got to push. You got to pray. You got to reach. You got to push. You got to pray. You got to reach. You got to push. You got to push to get out the bed. You got to push to come to church. You got to push to believe again. You got to push to raise your children. You come too far. You got to push to go to work. You got to push to do your time. You almost done. Push. Push. I know you're disappointed. I know your heart is hurt. I know you're tired. Get your strength. Turn and tell three people, I need you to push. Every mother, you got to push. Every business owner, you got to push. Every woman, you got to push. Every man, you got to push. push. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to live. You got to push. Get your peace back. Get your joy back. Push. Push. I need you to encourage somebody. If you know somebody that's been going through, I need you to go find them and say, I'm begging you. Push. It's worth the fight. Push. Your ladder going to be greater. Push. You closer than you realize. Push past the crazy people. Push past your co-workers. Lift your hands and push in worship. Push. Push. Make yourself get up and worship. Push past all the negativity. When you go on your job, you know what it is. Press past it. Let me go in here and do my assignment. Let me give you these hours I'm going to give you with a smile on my face and get my behind up out of here because I'm closer than you realize. 
my better days are ahead of me. Who am I talking to? Look, hold on, y'all. What used to be difficult is about to be made easy. He's literally about to get you to another place in him. Your struggle is about to be over. Because you made up your mind that this is going to be your year of expectation. And if the devil come over here, guess what? Why are you doing that? Because I'm not going through what I've been through. Baby, I'll leave you in a... What is he doing? He's repositioning you. I'm going to get you out of the job that you hate. And I'm going to open up a door for you that's going to be so easy. Because you did not slay the whole department. You passed with flying colors. I'm done. I am done. I am done. Hold on music. Hold on music. Hold on music. Hold it. Hold hold it. Hold it. I don't know what else I can say to you. I feel like I've, I've, I've depleted myself of this month to get you in your seat. And I need you to hear me. You cannot miss it this year. Because if you miss it this year, I don't know when it might come back around. Or if it will come back around. But you got to get in that seat regardless of yourself. I don't care about your weakness. You, you got to sit in the seat. I, you're not the first one to cry. It's a puddle around you, boo. Watch me. Every business owner, I need you to get it together because other people can't eat until you get in your seat. Other families will suffer if you don't sit in your seat. Israel would have suffered had not, had not he sat in that seat with his issues. Your family will suffer if you don't sit in your seat. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you with your crazy self. I don't know what else I could say to you. I've done it. I've done everything but just cut myself. I'm not cutting myself for you. I'm not going to lose no blood for you. Jesus shed enough. Have you given it your all? Can we just sing just a piece of that song? Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up on you He's able Say he's able. He's able. Yeah. Come on out here. Yeah. Come on, say it. Say God. God is able to do just what he said. Come on, say it. He would do. He won't give up on you. 
Say that one more time. Don't, don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. There He's are, able. Everyone stand. There are eight people in this building. I came to get you. <laughs> I literally came to get you today. You're in the right place at the right time. And you've already been predestined to be here. I need you to get out of your seat and walk up here where I am. This, there are four of you all. You've been in a backslidden state because you thought that you had messed up so bad and you thought that God was done with you. But he told me to tell you I'm married to the backslider. I still got a covenant over your life. If you know I'm talking to you, I shouldn't have to beg you to breathe again. Get out of your seat and come up here where I am. Move like it's an emergency. Come on, bro. Get out of your seat and get up here. Get out my seat. Yeah. It's a 911. There's somebody else supposed to be up here. He won't give up on you. He hasn't given up on you. He said, Yeah, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear me, let him open the door and let me in. The whole time I was preaching, I was preaching to you, get out of your seat. But you don't know what I'm going through. It ain't none of my business. That's between you and God. Get out of your seat and get up here. I'm going to count down. When I finish counting, I'm done. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three. Ask your neighbor, are we waiting on you? Are we waiting on you? Two. your heart back together again. Listen, I got some ministers that's going to come and stand behind you and we're going to pray this prayer on the screen. Whatever I say, I need you to repeat it. I love God. He'll chase you down, won't he? just to get his will out of your life. Man. We're about to pray this prayer. Without prayer, I need you to repeat it. Heavenly Father. Uh-uh, you got to open your mouth saying that. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this belief and this confession, I am saved. Give God a hand clap right there. Those, I got somebody behind you. They're going to tap you on your shoulder. And they, I want you to follow them that, that tap you. Follow them. They're going to take you in the back. We're just going to get some information. Everyone else have a seat. Just follow them. Let's give God a hand praise for souls.
That's crazy. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, he's able. To believe he's, he can rebound, you see? your heart cry oh listen for those of us that believe in tithing I need us to get our tithe ready for many of you all I need you to hear me clearly I need you to stay in the seat of expectation when it comes to your finances I need your attention your job is not your source you got to hear me. God got a way of opening up another well for you that'll shock you and blow your mind. On the last Sunday of the month, I'm going to give you four seeds. You decide out of the four. And I want this to be your seed of expectation. This is your offering. It's either 24, 48, 72, or 96. The Bible says he gives seed to the soul. Out of those four, which can you sow? I don't just want you to sow. I want you to sow and expect a miracle in your finances. I told you, a hundred people in this in this ministry, you're gonna get your house this year, and I'm gonna help you too. We are already planning a housing fair to bring in the realtors and the lenders that's gonna work with you to get your house. I've already ordered your welcome mat for the first hundred. And it says, welcome to the house that the Lord built. Everybody that believes God's about to change your address. Y'all can sit there if you want to. And he told me a hundred people will get keys this year. I'm going to make sure you get to the table to get your keys. What kind of church is this? He told me that some of y'all are about to travel the world. So I've already designed to have a passport fair. And the first hundred that sign up for that, when we do it, we're going to pay half on your passport. Because I'm sewing into your next 10 vacations. And you ain't going to Mississippi either. Take a name, I'm on my way to Italy. I'm going to Greece. I'm going to Spain. Yep, I'm even going to go to Africa. <laughs> I rebuke your age. You're going to get in that wheelchair and let them push you behind to the gate. And then get up like ain't nothing wrong with you and walk onto that plane. <laughs> Some of y'all be lying sitting in them wheelchairs. I walked up on somebody said, now you know better. Come on, I want you to, what, what seat are you going to give? Get it ready. You can text the verse NLCSC to 91694. If you need the QR code, take it off the screen. Those online, I want you to sew. Whenever you hear this, I need you to sew. Every business, I push business owners. You don't get no dog on 24. You the head. You go straight to the 96. Come on. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Y'all pray for me. I got one more service. And I'm going to go home and unplug. <laughs> and get ready for next month. Don't forget, at 3 o'clock, we're going to be praying for our kids, our babies, and our teenagers. Every house will get a bottle of oil. Um, we're going to stream it live. I'm not mailing oil to your house. God bless your ministries and all your kids. Come on, lift your seat up. Those of y'all that's going to sow that seed, 
I want this to be called your expectation seed. If you someone that expectation seed, can you just wave your wave it and just say, God, here I am, here I am. And tell God, I'm expecting a great return. I'm expecting 100 full return in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's let's make our confession. I'm a tithe and a giver, and I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you going to live it? For the rest of my life. Those of y'all that want Bibles, they're in the hall. I'll see you Thursday. I'm in town for Bible study. Can we thank God for Mama Reed who taught that Bible on Thursday? She a G in the spirit, ain't she? Y'all better get some seasoned friends. On your way out, if you have an envelope, you'll see deposit boxes to your right and your left. You can put it in the box. Those online, you can so Everyone else, consider yourself dismissed. And I'll see you Thursday for Bible study. I holla from 7 until 8.30. Can you not study with me for one hour and a half? Consider yourselves dismissed.